everyone welcome back to my channel it has been a while for obvious reasons <laughs> um so those of you who don't know or don't follow me on other socials i am pregnant and my husband and i are having another baby and that sounds so crazy to like say out loud because we've been keeping it so quiet for so long and as I'm filming this, nobody knows. I thought it would be really fun to film these kind of videos and I want to do them more in bigger chunks. I know some people do like six weeks, seven week, eight week, night week. That's like way too much for me. So I'll just break them down into groups. And if you guys like this, then maybe I'll continue them. But for now, I'm just doing my six to 11 weeks pregnancy update. I'm going to share kind of like symptoms that I've had and what I'm going through and everything because I know everybody's is so different. And I know these videos are always kind of fun because you can watch other people's and see kind of what their pregnancy journey is like and what their symptoms are and compare and everything. And it's kind of just fun to go on this journey with other people as well. So I really hope that you guys do like going along with me on this. Yeah, so I will just share with you guys kind of my pregnancy updates and kind of everything I've been going through, symptoms, all the fun pregnancy stuff that you go through, you know, and just a few little products and things I've been liking and everything, and I'll share those with you as well, and as well as my sweatshirt if you like it. I just got it from Misguided, and I really like it. So it is um, very cute. They have it in multiple colors. I can leave the link down below if you're interested in this cute little mama sweater. Um, yeah, but anyways, let's just jump into my pregnancy updates. Okay, so I have them saved on my phone because there's no way I would be able to remember each week. So I kind of documented in my notes all of my symptoms, cravings, aversions, all the fun, good stuff. Um, so we will start with week six. So six weeks is the week that we found out that we were pregnant. A little bit later, I probably could have found out a lot earlier, but the reason why was because I was on some medication that my doctor had given me. I do um, have IBS and that was recently diagnosed. Um, so I was on that and she had said me starting it would change my cycle. So when I was late, I thought that it was because of that. Um, I did not think that my husband and I would be able to get pregnant this early, like that fast, but that was just the blessing that was given to us very quickly and we're so, so thankful for that and it's really, I know there's a lot of people that struggle with trying to get pregnant and it takes them a while, so I know that we are very, very lucky and blessed to be able to have that happen for us so quickly. Um, but that is the week that I found out. I think I was like 10 days late at that point. Um, and then I finally took a test. So I just waited a while cause I thought it was just my medication. I didn't have any symptoms or anything. And then I just woke up one day and had, you know, the sore boobs, the, all this is going to be TMI because pregnancy is TMI. So if you don't want to watch this, I don't know why you clicked on this video because pregnancy is pure TMI. But I had the sore boobs and I was very nauseous when I woke up one day and I was like, I'm not sick. So took the test, found out it was positive, and then I told my husband a few days later. That was kind of how I knew and I just started to get the same symptoms. And then from that day that I found out, it was like pure symptoms. The main thing was the the swollen, like sore boobs, and then I got the nausea, and that started to really just come in full force in the morning, and I was really feeling it. I was very, very bloated, so like extremely bloated at six weeks. I was like, what is happening? But I do remember most of those things with my daughter as well. And I was having headaches every day and I did not have headaches with my daughter. So that is different. I'm not sure if it is related pregnancy or not. My doctor said that it usually is, but I didn't have it with my daughter. My cravings was literally fruit, like tropical fruit, like watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, pineapple, literally any fruit. Like I could not get enough of just fruit. Like that is what I wanted non-stop. Um, I did crave pickles really bad. That was also kind of how I knew like 
the night before I took a test, I was literally craving pickles when I woke up in the middle of the night, like 2 a.m. I actually came downstairs to grab some pickles and I ate them at like 2 a.m. So that was definitely a craving. And then I just craved healthy foods, you know, just salads, very green, leafy vegetables and fruits and everything. Um, orange juice, really bad, I craved so bad. Milk, for some reason, I don't even drink milk. Don't like it, but for some reason I was craving that as well. Um, like Slurpees, which was very common with my daughter as well. Just anything icy cold. My head versions, which is weird, was cheeseburgers. Like, it just grossed me out. Like, I did not want a cheeseburger. I actually tried to have a cheeseburger and it made me sick. Like, mm -mm. I was not about cheeseburgers at six weeks at all. <laughs> but that's pretty much it for six weeks. Just, you know, all those common symptoms, just coming in very hot and just some normal cravings, I feel like. So then came seven weeks and more nausea, bloating, same things as the previous week, swollen boobs, headaches, um, I was starting to get fatigued and very tired at week seven as well. Um, I was peeing all the time, getting a little bit moody, and I had a little bit of shortness of breath in my pregnancy brain had started. And I don't remember getting it so early, but like it came in hot this time. So I have been forgetting things like... I'm really, really good at remembering things and I remember everything for everybody in the house and for my husband and now he's like, doesn't have me to rely on because it's so bad lately, but I'm hoping that'll get better. Cravings in seven weeks was carbs. Literally bread, bagels with cream cheese. Like I do obviously opt for like whole wheat bread and whole wheat bagels and everything, but I could not get enough of bagels and bread because it was the only thing that made my nausea like start to go away. Um, I craved strawberries, watermelon, more fruit, some ice cream, and pepperoncinis. Pepperoncinis, so bad. Like, I was just eating them by the door. Like, I was just buying them from the store because I could not stop eating them. Um, I tried to <laughs> chill out because they have such high salt content, but could not get enough adversions. I really started to get adversions in seven weeks. Like nothing sounded good. And I think that's mostly to do with like the nausea and just nothing really sounded good. And the only thing I could eat really was stuff that <laughs> was substance. Um, so my adversions were onions. I could not stand the smell of onions like I had bought them for my daughter's birthday party and we had had them on like cheeseburgers and everything and after that like they were in my fridge I had to throw them away and I had to like wash everything that the onions touched because I could smell it for like the rest of the week I had to clean my dishwasher like it was disgusting and I usually like onions but I cannot do onions and I still can't do onions at week 11 so that's a really big inversion I'm having also like chicken chicken breasts like, I know it grossed me out so bad. Coffee, I didn't want anything to do with it at seven weeks. Nothing like that. And that was pretty much it for week seven. Very similar to week six. So on to eight weeks. That is when my nausea was the worst. I was having it so bad. And I feel like it was more so at night. And I know that it's usually in the morning with my daughter it was always in the morning so badly like 4 a.m 2 a.m 3 a.m so bad i was so so sick all of the time with her though constantly like i would actually be over the toilet probably like four or five times a day whereas with this one i'm 11 weeks and i still have not thrown up yet it's just been really bad nausea but not to the point where i've actually thrown up um but the nausea was definitely the worst. I was very tired, again, eight weeks. So, so tired, could not. I just was like, just wanting to sleep all day long. Um, 
couldn't stop going pee again non-stop in the middle of the night just constantly and obviously I've been increasing my water intake very much so trying to keep very hydrated so that doesn't help but I also had sciatic nerve pain I still kind of have it here and there but that started at eight weeks and I thought that that was very odd because with my daughter I didn't get the sciatic nerve pain until like my third trimester um I slept terrible at eight weeks really like crazy vivid dreams I know I had that with my daughter as well um, I started to get some heartburn and acid reflux, some more pregnancy brain, all of that. Um, my cravings were basically the same, still just bagels, bread. I was craving like junk food, which is terrible, but I was craving just like pizza, Wendy's, Taco Bell. So we were trying to like restrict that as much as I could, but I could not stop thinking about Wendy's spicy chicken nuggets and anything spicy I've been craving and also like salt and vinegar chips for some reason anything spicy salty um also anything watermelon like just watermelon in general I've been eating a ton of it um watermelon flavor anything like watermelon Italian sodas just the regular ones not Red Bull or anything I've been kind of on that little kick lately and also those strawberry shortcake ice cream bars. I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking about, but they're just like, I don't know. They're just like little ice cream bars and they're like strawberry shortcake flavor and they have like the little like ch cheesecake crumbs or whatever on them. I don't know, they're so good. My aversions, still onions and chicken, basically the same into week eight. And I also added tomatoes to that list which is crazy because my husband hates onions and tomatoes. So he's been loving that I don't want to eat anything with onions and tomatoes in it. So that was everything for week eight. And I think they're all very similar. I don't think it changes a ton by weeks. For week nine, I had more nausea, more bloating, and I was exhausted. That was the most tired week I've had was week nine. Um, I was having acid reflux, weird dreams. I had like ligament pain in my stomach. If you've been pregnant before, you know what I'm talking about. You can start to feel kind of like a stretching, pulling um, feeling in your stomach. So I had that, more pregnancy brain and forgetting things. And then I was <laughs> more TMI. I got very like backed up this week, like constipated, you know. So trying to increase my fiber and trying to help with that was a good idea. And then for cravings, I didn't have a whole lot of cravings. I felt like they started to slowly go down at week nine, but I did really want like pretzels or like soft pretzels. Watermelon was still a craving and pasta as well, um, kind of going with the carbs and orange soda craved orange soda really bad that week. Adversion still the same that week. Onions, chicken breast, and then salads. I started to not want salads at all week nine. They were disgusting to me. So that was kind of a different one. And I remember with my daughter, I barely ate anything because I was so sick with her. From like week five to week 14, I was sick. Like. I could barely eat anything. So this one has been much, much different in that department. I love that I can still eat foods. I just know that I have to be on a schedule with eating and I have to be like making sure I eat by a certain time because if I go too long without eating, that's when I can feel the nausea come back. Even if it's like a small snack, like some trail mix or an apple or granola bar or something just like a little snack I have to always bring something with me just in case and that really helps to kind of keep that nausea gone and then that was everything for week nine nothing crazy still kind of the same and we are on to week 10 the week that I am in now I am 10 weeks and six days so I will be 11 weeks tomorrow so this week I had some more nausea but I can feel it slowly trickling away this week, which is amazing. It just so happened to be like the past few days. It started trickling away 
and it has felt so good like I feel like I can actually function better and I feel still very tired this week and I am congested as well you can obviously hear that I'm congested and I've been also congested for the past few weeks I think I forgot to add that in there because I wasn't sure if it was a pregnancy symptom or if it was just like I was getting a cold or allergies but my daughter and my husband are both fine so I know my daughter was stuffy for a few days but she gets that very often because she is in school now so I just kind of thought it was that at first but now I'm like I'm still the only one who's been congested for weeks so I'm kind of thinking maybe now that that's also a symptom because it will not go away like I'm not sick or anything I just feel very congested all the time so there's that symptom extra nice for this week and then just some more ligament pain this week um, prominent veins like I think it's because of the increased blood flow or whatever but like my veins are just like very very noticeable and it's also probably because I'm very fair too very easy to see not a whole lot of cravings just some more fruit and coconut this week a little bit of tree nuts which is tough because my husband's allergic to tree nuts but usually I'll just take trail mix to work and leave it in my office and then I'll just eat them when I'm at work and that way I can get that my aversions don't really have any more it's just onions still um, I can eat salads again chicken isn't bothering me as much but onions is still a no and also like getting a little bit gassy like I feel like I can't stop like burping I know it's really gross but like the whole I feel like I just have like acid reflex and I just keep getting gassy and it's just like disgusting but that is definitely a symptom this week and that is coming in hot so that is pretty much all that I have for week 10 I mean I'm excited to see what week 11 has for me <laughs> and I'm hoping for a lot more energy and starting to come back a little bit because I'm kind of feeling like that today and I'm very excited for that um, I am very bloated I would say big for 10 weeks or turning 11 weeks I definitely have a noticeable bump and I think that that is partly because I am only like five foot one so I have a very small torso too so there's not very much room for things to go in my tummy so it just kind of goes out and I've always asked my doctors and I asked her already like why is this showing already like and i guess it's true that when you have a second pregnancy or third or fourth you usually tend to show earlier because your body's already done that before and it just that's how it goes i guess so i definitely have a little bump and i will show you guys um but yeah and i don't know if anybody's interested or cares to know like what I'm using for stretch marks or whatever it doesn't really matter because I already have them for my daughter there was no preventing them <laughs> but I still like to lotion up lather up and everything I don't think it hurts to take care of your skin anyways and just try and help and do what you can um, so I still just use the Palmer's like cocoa butter they have the stretch marks and like the regular one I just like to like mix them together or I'll just use this one on like my legs and arms and this one on like my belly, my butt, my thighs, my boobs, you know, stuff like that. And I also have the um, like tummy butter. It's like a really thick like paste. Obviously, I've used a ton of it, um, but I use that one with my daughter and I used a lot of coconut oil with my daughter. I still have stretch marks. I thought I wasn't going to get them, but I ended up actually getting them with her at like 36, 37 weeks, like literally at the end i was always like oh i'm not gonna get any i was so excited to not get any and they literally came at the end and i don't think there was anything that you could do to prevent those my doctor has said you know stretch marks are pretty hereditary and you just get what you get <laughs> um but i still like to prevent and try and everything and it makes me feel better and i really just like this lotion in general anyways because i put lotion on when i get out of the shower anyway so why not try and use this like stretch mark good stuff but yeah and these have really good like 
um, reviews on them and everything for pregnant women and not sponsored at all. I literally just bought these at Target. So stretch marks are fine. Stretch marks are beautiful. Stretch marks are like, I struggle with them sometimes, but you know what? It is what it is. You created a human and you're blessed to be able to create a human. So who cares if you have stretch marks, right? Another thing I've really been loving and drinking is just like my Yogi um, Purely Peppermint Tea. My doctor recommended peppermint tea to me because it really helps with nausea. I didn't know that with my daughter. I have a completely different doctor than I did with my um, first pregnancy. So I'm very excited about that. And I was recommended peppermint tea and it has been a lifesaver. I just make some hot peppermint tea in the morning and even when I'm not feeling good and it really does help. It feels just so refreshing to have when I have nausea and it really, really does help. So also the ginger tea too, but I feel like the peppermint tea really has helped a lot. So if you've tried everything for your nausea, maybe try some peppermint tea if you haven't already. Peppermint, I know I have like peppermint candies and stuff, but I really just love to sip on this like two or three times a day. So it's caffeine free and everything and it's really nice. My go-to right now is just water with a splash of coconut syrup. That's my coffee. It's <laughs> It works for me. I get a little bit of like sweetness from the coconut flavor. I've always drank this, but like lately it's been my vibe and obviously the coconut syrup does have sugar in it, but I literally just put a tiny splash and it just Add some flavor to your water. And it's literally just like my coffee tea for the day. And it works for me. So, love that. And then the last thing is, what do I think the gender is? Because I know a lot of moms say like, I can feel like it's this, or I think it's this. You know, you kind of just get like this intuition, like you think it's something. So with this pregnancy, I feel like it's a boy and that is maybe me trying to manifest it being a boy and my husband and I have both said we think it's a boy. He thinks it's a boy too and I'm not sure why I feel that way. I think it's because this pregnancy is completely different than my one with my daughter that I'm like, well, maybe it's a boy and even my doctor has mentioned that too. She's like, well, it could be the other gender. Your pregnancy is completely different, you know? We'll see, we already have a name picked out. I've had it picked out for a while. If it's a boy, we don't have any girl names. So we'll see how that goes. And of course we will announce it and everything on here, but I'm so excited that I'm able to finally talk about this and share it. And uh, I'm so excited for you guys to watch this. Um, this video will probably not be uploaded for another few weeks. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and being here and I hope that you like this kind of content and what I'm going to be bringing to my channel and this new little addition to our family. We're so excited. So I hope that you guys are too and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and want to follow along on the pregnancy journey with us and so excited. So. Thank you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. I will try and show you guys a quick little bump shot, my little belly. I am wearing maternity pants that I got from Amazon because they're very comfortable and stretchy and I don't have to worry about anything like restricting me down there, you know? Um, I do still kind of fit in my normal like pants and yoga pants and stuff, I still wear those. Um, but like my jeans and stuff do not button anymore. So uh, yeah, I just have been wearing these and they're really nice. They're from Amazon, so I'll leave a link for these below as well if you want to check them out. They do have them in a few other colors, but... So here is my little bump, and I mean, it's not very little. It's getting big, but that is it, and like I said, I'm very small, so I do show very early, and this is not my first pregnancy, so um, I know I showed a little bit later with my daughter, but that is it, a little he or she, so... Like I said, these are maternity pants, so they're awesome. They go all the way up, um, and I love that. <laughs> so they suck everything in, but they have all this extra elastic for your tummy to just keep growing. So I'll use these the whole time. So um, my pregnancy size before, I'm 5'1", and around 120, 
225 pounds um, and I literally don't have much for a torso like that's it so that's where they go they just come right out so I know I'll have people asking me when I'm about five six months when I'm due any day now that's what they used to do but we just eye roll those people right Bye.